Thomas can be described as a cheeky, fussy little engine. He often gets into scrapes, usually by being over-eager to do things best left to bigger and more sensible engines. But clouds never last long in Thomas's life, and he's soon bustling about again, playing his part in the yard and on his very own branch line, of which he is extremely proud. Percy is the junior member of the principal team of engines. He is a happy little chap who's normally quite happy puffing around the yard with no particular desire for adventure in the great world outside. He is always keen to oblige, a fact of which the other engines are apt to take advantage. Gordon is the senior member of the engine family, the fastest, and most powerful of Sir Topham Hatt's string, and he knows it. He's good-hearted, though, and always willing to forgive and use his superior strength to help smaller engines out of trouble. Henry is a long, fast engine. He has a thoroughbred look, and like all thoroughbreds, tends to be somewhat highly strung and prone to illness but he has his new shape now, and sympathetically driven, he'll give any engine a run for its money. Duck is a cheerful and busy engine. He's only a small tank engine, but coming as he does from the Great Western Railroad, he'll stand no nonsense whatsoever from the larger engines who try to order him about. Mavis is a feisty young diesel engine who works at the quarry. She is full of her own ideas and doesn't take kindly to advice. She has a lot to learn about trucks, but with Toby's help, she is learning to be a really useful engine. James is a medium-sized engine. His six driving wheels are not as big as Gordon's and not as small as Thomas's. He has a fine scarlet coat and brass dome and likes to think of himself as a really splendid engine. This can occasionally lead to highfalutin ideas about the sort of work suitable for such a noble creature. Invariably, they land James in trouble. Edward is an older engine, but the most important thing about him is that he's kind when the other engines misbehave. It's Edward that Sir Topham Hatt turns to to calm everyone down and restore order. Toby is old-fashioned, both in looks and outlook. Every engine, no matter how old, wants to be really useful, and having once nearly been scrapped, Toby is always happy to work. He's not above being temperamental sometimes, but since he works mainly up an outlying quarry line, he can work off his moods without causing grief to anyone except his own faithful coach, Henrietta. Annie and Clarabelle were given to Thomas as a reward for being a really useful engine. They are much loved, but have both seen better days. Annie carries passengers. She is always pulled by Thomas and travels facing him. Clarable is a composite coach. She has one section for passengers and one for luggage. And the guard, Clarable, always travels behind Annie, facing away from Thomas. Bertie has a great deal in common with Thomas. Ever since their great race, they have been the firmest of friends. Bertie's strongest characteristic is his friendly grin and his readiness to help any engine prepared to admit that just sometimes roads have their uses as well as rails. In a railway family, Harold can hardly avoid having a high profile. 
He brings a welcome spot of dash to the quiet landscape of Sodor whenever he appears, and even if the noise he makes is occasionally wearing, he is good-hearted and the engines are always pleased to see him. Like all cranes, Cranky has a high and mighty attitude which often annoys the engines. Cranky knows that if he ever gets too big for his crane hook, the engines have ways of getting back at him. However, Cranky enjoys teasing them because he says it makes for good working relationships, but don't ask Percy if he agrees. Bolstrode is an old bad-mannered motorized seagoing barge. He's only happy when he's carrying a full load of cargo, otherwise he's grumpy and rude. His moaning and groaning soon got him in trouble when Percy and some troublesome trucks taught him a lesson. Trevor is a very old tractor who enjoys to spend time dozing in the sun. However, he dislikes being left outside for too long and loves an opportunity to show he's still capable of a good day's work. Slow and steady and always with a smile. That's Terence. The subject of endless teasing from the younger engines because of his caterpillar tracks Terence takes it all in good stride and gets on with the job, never hesitating to help out when an emergency pull is called for. It's been many years since the young Mr. Topham Hatt first came to Sodor as a railway engineer. He rose quickly in the company, being a director at an early age, and eventually chairman, his imposing appearance, no less than his firm but kindly handling of both engines and staff, earned him the affectionate nickname of the fat director. Then, after nationalization when he was awarded a knighthood for his services to the railway industry, he became Sir Topham Hatt, the fat controller. It's on this huge overstuffed couch that Lunette, the central character begins her adventures. An energetic child clown, Lunette was so named because of her large reading glasses Lunettes in French and her loony personality. She is adventuresome and mischievous, traits which can sometimes lead to surprises, but always takes responsibility for her actions. Like many children, Lunette has a best friend, her doll, Molly. But Molly is no ordinary doll. She is very much alive as her thoughts are conveyed to viewers in thought bubbles above her head. The big comfy couch is full of secrets, and two of its funniest secrets are the dust bunnies, Fuzzy and Wuzzy, who live under the couch. The dust bunnies are a shared secret between Molly and the viewers at home. Lunette and the others do not believe that they exist. Next to Lunette's couch is her dollhouse, where the funny Foley family lives. Dad, Mom, and Andy Foley do not speak, but rather communicate with their own distinctive sounds that express their characters and changing moods. One of Lunette's neighbors and dear friends is Major Bedhead, clown courier extraordinaire. Riding a unicycle, he wheels in each day, delivering packages that are connected to the movement theme of the day.
Lunette's next door neighbor is Granny Garbanzo, an old country's clown grandmother whose eclectic use of fractured English is an unending source of fun and mix-up. A former high-wire performer, Granny is always climbing ladders and doing balancing acts as she works in her garden with her rambunctious companion, Snickle Fritz the cat, and around her colorful gypsy caravan wagon. Auntie Macassar is Lunette's globe-trotting aunt. Although she travels far and wide, she always remembers Lunette with postcards, packages, and letters. Auntie Macassar's funny cards usually impart some newfound wisdom she has acquired in her travels and reminds Lunette and the viewers alike that the world is full of diversity and adventure. I am a very big six-year-old yellow bird who is every child. I get excited over new things and disappointed when things don't work out or when I make mistakes. I am willing to try again, correct my mistakes, and just by being persistent find solutions to problems. I possess a broad range of universal emotions. Elmo is a small red muppet with a high-pitched voice. Elmo has the voice and the traits of a three-year-old child. Elmo, like Cookie Monster, speaks a monster language that younger children can identify with. He never uses pronouns, often referring to himself by name. Elmo wants to go to the park. Enthusiastic, friendly, and cheerful, he always wants to be a part of everything that goes on. The lovable and affectionate Google-eyed monster. Cookie was originally solely a cookie gobbler. Over the years, he has become much more nutrition conscious. And even though cookies are still his favorite, he has acquired a taste for everything from apples to zucchini. He also eats non-food stuff. He speaks in monster languages, which is simple and direct. Me want cookie. Bert is the long-suffering, serious, and often eccentric sidekick to Ernie, the straight man of the team. He seems the older of the two more domestic, responsible, and analytical. Basically affectionate, Bert always forgives Ernie his jokes, remaining Ernie's old buddy Bert. His favorite things are bottle cap and paperclip collecting, brass band music, and his pet pigeon. Ernie is free-spirited and outgoing. He is constantly trying to get Bert involved in fun and games, which usually end up to Bert's disadvantage. He often teases, but his games and jokes are never meant to hurt. Ernie is also good at explaining things. Sometimes he is too smart for his own good, falling prey to his own jokes, or getting caught in his own explanations. Snuffy is a shy, huge, shaggy patchetterm who is my best friend. We enjoy playing and discovering things together. Snuffy is four years old and has the personality of a child that age. When he has difficulties, his first impulse is to give up, but with a little prodding he can solve the problem himself. 